Good morning on Monday, May 15th, and you are just in time for yet another edition of the 359 Podcast. It's episode 227. I'm BVG, and in the house we have Joni Solzman and Roger Chang. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. Happy Monday. The crack security experts are here to talk about ransomware. Security crack. (laughs) Actually, Alfred Ng is our normal security expert, but he is out at TechCrunch Disrupt this morning. Uh, So we're going to try to fill his shoes. We're going to talk about WannaCry. We're going to pretend to be experts and try to get some questions answered. Uh, and we also want to know if you guys were affected by this. Uh, and then we'll we'll talk about uh, Maggie Reardon's story. Uh, she interviewed the uh, senator from Hawaii, Brian Schatz, who is vowing to be net neutrality's uh, newest champion. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Brian will pick out the best. We'll get to them in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. From... And, sorry, I'm totally oh. congested still. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right. Sorry. Buckle up, we'll be back to join you in the chat in just a few minutes, and here we go in three, two... Welcome to the 359, I'm Roger Chang. I'm Joni Salzman. By now, I'm sure you've heard about WannaCry, the ransomware that's disrupted more than 100,000 organizations in at least 150 countries. We first heard about these attacks from the hospitals in the UK, but it's really kind of blown up into much, much, uh, to a much huger thing. Uh, the hackers may actually end up making more than a billion dollars once all the ransoms are collected. Joan, questions, thoughts? <laughs> this is insane, right? Like this is, and it, it feels like it's getting worse. Well, talk to me about this, at least temporary solution that. Yes. That only cost like ten dollars and ninety six cents. Yeah, this was kind of amazing. Uh, just like a, a sort of a random developer was looking at the code. He's trying to see what he could do, uh, and 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 trying to mon- trying to monitor the actual attacks. He went and he bought this really obscure domain name, and by activating the domain, that was actually the kill switch to right. the to the uh, WannaCry. Uh, they had actually written the code that if this domain goes live, everything just dies. And so he actually temporarily disrupted this huge attack on Friday. Unfortunately, there is a a new version, a patch that came out for WannaCry, so there is no kill switch anymore. Like it's now it's invulnerable. Who patched it? The- so. The the uh, I'm assuming the the hackers, the hackers did. first developed ransomware. That's yeah, so funny. But, um, yeah, it was just sort of this weird thing. He bought the domain for about ten bucks, ten sixty two, I think was the exact amount, uh, and then they totally disrupted this this massive multi billion dollar scheme, this evil plot to take over the world. <laughs> um, but it's back up and running, so we're all screwed. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's kind of crazy that. Uh, it's really ultimately like this attacks or this targets computers that are slightly old. They run an older version of Windows, of Windows right? right? So it's like XP. If you're on XP, uh, really computers that have those vulnerabilities that can't be patched, that's pretty screwed. And this this attack really shows like how much of our infrastructure still runs on older software. Right. Right. Like I don't know about you, but every time I go to a doctor's office, they're running XP. <laughs> they're not running anything newer. And I ask about it, they're like, I don't really want to upgrade. What about with, um, so Microsoft, was it a, a legal executive um, that came out and was criticizing government institutions? I mean, speaking of yeah. of, of organizations that run usually on outdated software. Um, so the, the Microsoft came out, basically, you know, they, they chastised the government for the, especially the CIA, for basically stockpiling or figuring out what these loopholes were and not telling anybody, right? That's how right. they were able to use these loopholes to spy on, well, other folks or us, I don't know. Uh, but well, we're not running Windows XP, right? Uh, but the fact that you know, see, the CIA knew about this for a long time and didn't tell Microsoft, so they couldn't patch it in time. Right, definitely led to to problems like WannaCry. That's so that really was, interesting. That was their big issue. Yep. All right. Next up, uh, net neutrality is still an issue. Uh, the FCC, while well, the FCC is still looking to dismantle the existing rules, uh, our own Maggie Reardon interviewed Brian Schatz, a senator from Hawaii who is the leading Democrat on the subcommittee overseeing the FCC. Uh, and he, in his interview with Maggie, sort of vowed to take up the fight for net neutrality and keep those existing rules in place. Yeah. He also, sorry, he also brought up, um, given that there's just so much craziness going on because of the Trump administration, because it's yep. such a, you know, break down the barn doors, yep. disrupt everything, whether or not net neutrality is something that's going to sort of become part of the noise. Lost in the Yeah, house. I mean, that, I think that's one of the risks uh, is that because there's just there's like a new controversy bubbling up every day that net neutrality does get lost. I think there are there are enough people out there, you know, tech companies, consumer advocate groups who who have been in this fight for a while, so they'll probably stick with it. 
Uh, one of the interesting things, the uh, you know the John Oliver segment from last week, uh, shortly after the FCC site went down, the FCC said it wasn't John Oliver, it was actually botnets. Uh, Brian Chess actually isn't sure about that. He's actually questioning. Mm-hmm. He actually wants data from the FCC to prove that that's the right. case. So kind of interesting. Yeah, it's definitely it's like it's it's one of the many partisan issues that are out there right now. But we'll we'll continue to cover it. So for more on these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Joni Salzman. Thanks for listening. All right, jumping uh, right into the chat. First and foremost, let's go ahead and petition out to our listeners. Who out there is still on XP? Who is still in so, the vulnerable area? I'm not, but I have this ancient computer um, that I need to get rid of. And the only reason I haven't gotten rid of it, it's on Windows. And I think it might be XP. It, I'm pretty sure it is. The only reason I keep it is because all of my, speaking of MP3s earlier before we got onto the, <laughs> all of my old my old MP3 libraries on there. So whenever I want to burn a CD, um, which is like maybe once a year, for a friend, oh. I have to like pull that thing out of the closet, and I did that uh. this weekend. I, the, so the one weekend where there's like, if you're running a really old Windows PC, you are exposed to like having your computer locked out. Now, but it, the good thing but, is, I'd be like, you know what? Take the MP3s. It's but fine. is it? I won't it, pay the ransom. Is the laptop connected though? To the internet? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you just? Oh, so you do actually? Have it's it an all-in one. It's not even a laptop. It's a, it's an actual oh, like computer. Okay. But like, you could just shut off the internet access. Like that's. Once that's one way to avoid all this stuff, right? That's true. Yeah. Basically, take out the Ethernet port. Yeah. And just run it as sort of a dump. So computer. I haven't, as far as I know, I haven't been hit by this thing. I mean, you would know. Obviously. I would, yeah. Like <laughs> your computer would be locked up. So, just to be clear, like ransomware doesn't take your information. Right. It just locks up your computer, and basically, you get a little note saying like, if you want your computer to be unlocked, please by send three hundred dollars in Bitcoin. Is it possible Bitcoin. to show our viewers on one of the stories that we had? I don't know if it, it showed um, what the like message looks like that you get when you're. Um, I guess neither of the stories that we have up. Let me see I if I can find. Think the I think I. But there's like the picture that like there was a screen grab that Alfred used in one of his stories of the picture that you get. Um, let me see if I can send it to you, Brian. Oh uh, yeah, it's actually it's uh this this picture. Ransomware wanna cry kill switch engaged. It's I as a story. Yeah. Um, but the top of the message is, oops, your files have been encrypted, exclamation point. It's so <laughs> innocuous. <laughs> it's like, oops, and then there's like a fact, like what happened to my computer? Oh, wow. That's really yeah. kind of them they're making, to send this. And they've, and they've released this patch so that their, their ransomware can continue to function. Like patches are something that are just so like mundane that like Microsoft has every however many times. It's the second video right there. Yeah. I think it's the... No, no, not that one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, dude. This is really visually interesting I for all know. of us. I'm trying to find it here. I think it's that one, right? No, it's a video. Sorry. Uh, the headline's ransomware want right to kill. Well, there's the image right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the image. All right. Oops. Bring it on. Show Your files viewers. have been encrypted. Joan, you got to... Sorry. <laughs> on your microphone. So, yeah, you're right about the innocuous message. Yeah. Oh my God, look, there's a warning message that says payment will be raised in, and then there's like a countdown timer. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize there was that element to it. Like, it gets more expensive with time. So let's try to dole out some advice about what to do in this situation That's if you good, yeah. have been affected. So you ex- expanded on how this is, um, how the ransomware really works. It's just going to lock you up, and it's literally demanding a ransom to get yep. your functionality back. Yep. Um, the, the thing of it is, is if you're especially, I mean, this is for businesses. This is mostly organizations that got that affected. Um, but if you're like an individual that gets hit by ransomware, they a, and they ask you for like three hundred dollars in Bitcoin, like a normal person is not going to be able to like go down the street and be like, "I'll take three hundred dollars in Bitcoins, please." Like that's yeah. actually a rather complicated scenario. Like I don't know how to pay. Like I wouldn't even know how to pay the ransom. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what let's talk about Windows Seven. We've already covered XP to a certain extent. Will Windows Seven get support or patches against this malware? Just wants to know. I don't. That's a really good question. I don't know. I mean, uh, eventually they're going to have yeah. to, but as of right now, we don't have any specific information coming out of Microsoft if that's on the docket. And I mean, the they sort of is. sunset. Well, actually, I, I would say highly unlikely since they've sunsetted like basically all the older versions of Windows. Like they don't support yeah. them anymore, so I don't know if those patches are around. Like, Microsoft's suggestion would be to get on a new version of Windows, not stay yeah. on Windows 7. Right. And then exactly how does the infection take place? It's all through email, right? Uh, yeah. There's a, I believe it's, I'm not entirely sure how it, like, 
worms its way into your computer, but I believe email is one of them. Uh, let's see. Actually, that's kind of unclear what, how it actually works. Keep in mind, we are not the security experts. <laughs> no, we're... Let's, once again, must repeat that we're, we're really just working off of Alfred's coverage at this point. And then let's expand. Uh, uh, Peta, Peta, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, is asking if Windows 10 is also vulnerable to this. Uh, no, uh, they, they patched this vulnerability up, I think, a couple of months ago. Uh, they were alerted to it patched it so i mean if you're if you if you're running an older or newer version of windows you should be fine so is this windows and themselves enacting ransom and enticing you to get a newer <laughs> operating that system? is a conspiracy theory i don't want to engage in uh, <laughs> it's something worth thinking about <laughs> well you find out like the next quarterly earnings microsoft just miraculously has got extra billion dollars i throw in there whoops <laughs> All right, so then let's do a little, a little advice. You know, it's very obvious that you will know when this has affected you as yep. you'll get this you'll lovely message. You won't be able to use your computer. Message, yeah. Yeah. Handy so, message. It tells you how to pay up. So outside of paying up, what do you do, A, to recover, and B, to possibly um, protect against? Uh, if you get hit, it's really hard, actually. I believe uh, even uh, authorities will recommend that you pay up the ransomware. Which is kind of weird, you know. Usually, even like the government, you know, the government usually says you you don't don't do negotiate this. with terrorists. Exactly, except when it comes to ransomware, <laughs> uh, because it's just it's you too much trouble. Negotiate with hackers, yeah, sometimes. exactly. <laughs> uh, but in terms of like how you could avoid this in the first place, it is just it's as simple as updating to the newest version of Windows, uh, or just make sure you're you you're up to date with Patch Tuesday. You know, patching yeah. constantly. Um, that's really all you could do. Outside of hope. very militantly watching over your email. Yeah. Uh, don't be a fool. If you are going to stick to don't, an Yeah, don't older... click on weird emails that, you know, you don't recognize the addresses for, or the domains. You exactly. Know. But those are, I mean, it's the same kind of tech tips that you would use to avoid phishing attacks or basically any other kind of security attack, right? I, I don't know if anyone else out there got this, but I got a sketchy one from AT&T this weekend, which is obvious BS. Was it att. Is or something. I don't even remember what the, the the domain attached to the address was, but it looked exactly like a traditional uh, account email, letting me know mm. that my account's been updated. And like I haven't touched my account. I know that nothing has happened there. My wireless has changed. Right. Not no, not one iota. So you know, you just got to be on the lookout. Don't click. Gotcha. We got to come up with like a good slogan. Like, um, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. What can we say? <laughs> don't. <laughs> if the deep cuts. What uh, farming it out to the chat? What's a good come up with a rhyme a that good... doesn't involve genitalia in some <laughs> form? I like that we have to. Uh, we have to clear precursor we have to, that yeah, caveat. We, we have to have that uh, suitable for work. This is the internet. Svet has an interesting comment. He says, um, "Can't you run Hydra and do a dictionary attack on your own account to crack the password? It might take a few days, but at least you might not have to pay." Now that's interesting, but you're taking a lot of risks into your own hands if you're going to go ahead and crack your own system temp yeah uh potentially opening up even further threats to well that and like i would hazard to guess 99 percent of people out there would not know how to do any of that right the people uh, that are exposed yeah generally if you're not most of the people who are using normal xp yeah. probably don't know how to do this yeah right? touche However, there are a number of us who like to stick to an older operating system. I myself am sticking to an older iOS yeah. on a backup machine I have because of licensing and software and firmware oh, yeah, and not yeah. wanting to get stuck, having to buy new licenses for software that yeah. I've grandfathered in. True. So, but that's the trade-off you have to make, though. I mean, we, I've, what's, we, what's we, the greater risk? We kind of joke about it. We have our own uh, internal expense uh, reporting system. That requires us to use a, you know, a an older version of uh, software that would put us in, you know, would technically be put us make us vulnerable, and it's a trade off. It's like, do you want your money or do you want security? So Assad, it's something everyone has to deal with. Assad is asking how badly this can daisy chain. He says, uh, could anyone be infected if the virus sends email from my friend's email who is infected with the virus? So how does it I'm actually sure. trojan its way down I'm not the line? Sure how it, I'm not sure how it works that if it works that way that it like actually spreads out like a virus or if it's a directed attack. Um, again, we are not the security experts, so. <laughs> but um, but if your friend who is exposed sends it to you and you're somebody on a Mac system, then you're fine. 
Yes, right? because it's not the same vulnerability. You also have to, yeah. Correct, yeah. You have to be vulnerable to begin also, with. Also, I don't know if that's how it works, though. Like, if your system is locked down, like, I don't yeah. know if emails can be sent out to other people to get locked down as Wait, well. Wait, can you guys hear that? Here, it's the crowd of Mac haters <laughs> coming to beat down the door. <laughs> they have their own vulnerabilities. Absolutely, so. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Come on, yeah, you just gotta yeah. run with the joke. Uh, oh, imagine Soggy wins the contest. If it if it don't seem legit, don't click. I all can right, go with that. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's there's no genitalia references at all there. It's it that that's the kind of thing like you can apply that so retroactively down the line. And yeah. It's like if you got a virus, like are you a grandmother who just got your first Windows machine? Kind of like yeah. If I feel bad for somebody who has been affected by this, but I'm also like, come on, <laughs> really. You know, we take for granted like certain best uh, sort of best practices for security. Like people don't deploy those, right? Yeah. You know, your passwords probably aren't as secure as you want them to be. I think we all have our own vulnerabilities. Absolutely. Uh, Pita is asking uh, which security is better, McAfee or Norton? Um, personally, I have more experience with McAfee. I know for a fact that us here as employees of CBS, it is IT sanctioned that all of our systems are on McAfee. Um, I didn't even know that. As a... Well, uh, I'm, I'm kind of going with like, well, the corporate guys wouldn't take any risks. I do trust our IT department uh, as they do know more about security than sure. I personally sure. do. So I'm going to favor McAfee in this one only from, again, personal experience. I've actually tended to use Kaspersky a lot. Uh, I don't know what that's, although... Rob Miller has mentioned Kaspersky. I've never used it. What was your experience with it? I mean, it's fine. It slows down your computer like every other security software, but it yeah. protects it. Um, Worth it. Yeah, it's generally good. Um, Although they've run into controversy because they've got they're based in Russia and now our Congress is concerned that there are ties between the government and Kaspersky. So really, which they've denied, they've denied, and there's no proof of it. But uh, there's actually been controversy about that. So yikes, go figure. All right, well that's probably a good place to land it for the day. We wish I could give you a, a little more information, but we're still kind of like riding along on this train with you. Yeah, guys. there's there's plenty of more stuff coming, and we'll be talking about Wanna Cry a lot this week. Uh, there are, as I we imagine, recover from yeah the the blast zone uh, but of course later this week we've got google io so we'll have a lot to talk about this week it's gonna be it's, it's already shaping up to be a pretty hectic crazy week so and we look forward to having stuff. you along for the entire ride there you go all right it's called a day yep if you liked anything you saw or heard here check us out on cnet our podcast is available on itunes tune in stitcher soundcloud feed burner and google play music see y'all tomorrow see you tomorrow bye